Hi guys, I'm Dr. Suchita Verma. Welcome to my YouTube channel and today I'm going to discuss about a spread plate method. So let's get started. Now the spread plate method is a technique to plate a liquid sample containing bacteria so that the bacteria are easy to count and isolate, right? Now this technique it ensures even distribution of bacteria over the surface of an agar plate medium. Now let us start with the protocol for this method. So for a general idea what we are going to do is that we are going to take a small volume of the bacterial suspension and then this small volume is being spread evenly on the agar surface using a sterile bent glass rod as the spreading device. Now this bent glass rod is called the spreader, right? An important point here is that each plate, each medium plate is spread with a single inoculum of the bacterial suspension. I'm going to talk about the general steps on how to proceed this test, right? So let's see. Now first and foremost, we are going to make the dilution for the sample. So we are not going to use the original sample as it is. We are first going to dilute the sample. Then from that dilution, we, we will pick a particular dilution we want to proceed with. Then from that sample, what we are going to do is that we are going to pip it out 0.1 ml from that selected dilution onto the center of the surface of an agar plate. After that, we are going to dip this L-shaped glass spreader into the alcohol, flame it over a Bunsen burner and let it cool. Then we are going to spread the sample evenly over this agar surface in the petri dish using this spreader as well as carefully rotating the petri dish underneath at the same time. Now this ensures the even distribution of the bacterial suspension, right? Further, we are going to incubate the plate at 37 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. Now once you are done with this experiment or <clears throat> and now there is growth on the medium plates and the qualities are being formed, so each colony is being referred to as, as colony forming unit. Now the point is that it is not one bacteria, it is one colony forming unit that is going to give rise to new CFUs, right? So how to calculate this value? So to calculate the CFU value, what we need to do is that we will count the number of colonies on the medium plate and then we are going to multiply by the appropriate dilution factor why because we have already diluted the original sample so the particular dilution we have taken we have taken we are going to multiply the number of colonies by that dilution factor and this will give us the total number of cfu that is the colony forming unit per ml in the original sample so this is how you are going to proceed for the method, right? Now this method has some advantages as well as disadvantages. Let us discuss now. Now among the advantages, we have the very first advantage is that it is used for viable plate count. So all the living bacteria, you can count them and that will give you the total number of CFUs that is a colony forming units on a single plate. So it is basically a very good method for the enumeration of the bacteria another thing is that you can calculate the concentration of the cells in the broth also if the sample is not plated then you can even calculate in the broth also so this is routinely being used for the enrichment selection and screening experiments right another very good important advantage is that because the uh, molten hot agar is not being poured it is already being solidified the medium is already present in the solidified state so any microorganisms which are heat sensitive are not being affected so even they can grow right also 
no subsurface colonies appears in spread plate so isolation of the organism is very very easy because all the microorganisms they will grow only on the surface now when we talk about the disadvantages the very first thing is that strict aerobes are only favored while if we talk about micro aerophilic they tends to grow slower also the dilution should be accurate so that we will get different colonies at a particular distance so that they are easy to isolate and they are easy to uh, count also right sometimes what happens is that we face problems like crowding the colonies gets very crowded in that case we cannot count so the enumeration becomes very very difficult so to avoid crowding also we need to dilute the original sample say if we use the original sample as it is supposedly you are uh, you have taken soil sample so you need to uh, dilute it if you will not dilute it then you will not get uh, different Uh, properly spaced up colonies you will get crowded colonies maybe even you can get a lawn also lawn so in that case if you get a lawn you are not able to isolate the colonies right so sometimes in exams also it is being asked that why do you need to dilute your sample so the simple answer is that the uh, sample contains a huge number of bacteria so we need we need interspaced colonies we need isolated colonies so to get isolated colonies in such a small place we need to dilute the sample by a factor so that the colonies when formed on the agar plate are spaced nicely that is that will you know make the process of their isolation easy so that is all for the spread plate technique and now i'm going to post uh, further videos so don't forget to subscribe the channel do like the video share with your friends and keep supporting the channel thank you so much have a nice day